This is your host, Bruce Hutchin, welcoming you to another informative episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. This is Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast, episode number 328. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. This is your host, Bruce Hutchin, and it's a special privilege to have Kenny Maynard on the show today. If you heard the intro um, from yesterday, Kenny was hurt in Afghanistan. Uh, his arms, left arms all messed up, but doesn't stop him from still hunting whitetails in Kentucky. He's got a great story, and there's a lot of lessons to learn. Number one is you always don't have to be high in a tree stand to get a big buck. Kenny's story is simply he got within 36 yards last fall of a, two whitetails, a nine-pointer and a ten-pointer. The white nine-pointer got up and within. 30 yards, he went down, one shot. And so listen to the story and also listen about Warriors in the Woods. Kenny's going to share about that nonprofit organization. Going to be a great show. And thank you, Kenny, for your service to our country. It's never too early to think about food plots. Wait Till Rendezvous has an ebook for you. Just simply text 33444 Food Plot to get your copy. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, and this is your host. And it, it's a pleasure, folks, to introduce Kenny Maynard. Kenny's a veteran, a uh, disabled veteran, and he's got an organization called Warriors in the Woods. Kenny, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, buddy. Hey, it's our pleasure, and um, thank you for the service and dedication and commitment uh, to you know to this country and to the freedom that we um, have because of men like men and women like you. So let's start right off and let's talk about Warriors in the Wood. What's that all about? It's a uh, nonprofit organization. Um, we take uh, veterans on guided first class guided hunting and fishing trips. Um, I'm going on a trip later on to, uh, uh, it's uh, Lake Erie, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be doing some uh, small mass bass, and, uh, bass, bass fishing sorry, up there, and um, they're actually helping me get a, a, a prosthetic glove to where I'm, I'm not able to use my left arm. Um, they're getting me a, a, a prosthetic glove that actually mounts to your fishing reel to where you don't have to use your hand to reel with, so you'd just be using arm movements. I thought that's pretty neat how we're, you know, we're getting involved with prosthetics and stuff like that now. Um, it, uh, you know, it's all expenses paid. If you got any questions or anything like that, they got Facebook, uh, websites, uh, warriorsinthewoods.net. So, uh, um, if you'd like to go on a hunting and fishing trip, just, uh, get on there and get on the Facebook page and, uh, sign up and we'll be, we'll be happy to help you out. Now I'm going to, I'm, I'm live on my computer right now. So what I'm going to do is, is go to that page. What was that page again on Facebook? Uh, Warriors in the Woods. <clears throat> Mike Gophus is the actual, uh, he's the, the organization uh, uh, president. Is that our and, Ohio? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. So, folks, uh, Facebook Warriors in the Woods, um, and uh, you can get there and, and get involved. Uh, I know there's a lot of organizations for the veterans, but everybody um, seems to fit into the locale and, and the people they meet. And it's all about getting guys like Kenny out there. And uh, Kenny volunteers and he, and he makes it happen um, himself. So it, it's important that, uh, you know, I'm asking you just go to that page, uh, like the page, and then see if that's something that you want to get involved in. Now, Kenny, you mentioned, um, you mentioned fishing. Now, what about hunting? What's your story about hunting? Um, uh, let's see. Last year was my actual first year hunting, and I started in early April um, scouting, and uh, I've never actually had the chance to go hunting. Um, we, uh, um, I spent six years in the military, and once I came back, I had a job in a uh, coal miner, <laughs> and I was working anywhere from 12 to 14 hours a day trying to provide for the family. And here recently, I had to have surgery on my arm to try to fix the nerve, and during that surgery, um, when I woke up from the surgery, they, they said I wouldn't be able to uh, use my left arm anymore. Um, so I had to quit my job. And uh, I'm recently, uh, you know, uh, my wife's been working and we've just been doing little things, just trying to make it around the house. But we, uh, this year I started out hunting and uh, started in April, I guess it was. Started scouting and um, I, I hunt in the mountains and you, all you hear is wind and stuff like that. And in eastern Kentucky, um, all, you, all you see in the hills is 
whirlwind. You're not going to be able to get down the wind of a deer. Uh, it, it's almost impossible. So still hunt is pretty much your only option. Um, a lot of my buddies and stuff do uh, hunt in the tree stands. And, um, you know, they... We do all that on public ground, which is flat, but where I live, it's private ground. And uh, tree stands are an option. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much still hunting or uh, um, getting lucky that morning in your tree stand, you know. But I've done some, a lot of scouting the last, I guess, from April to uh, uh, late October, uh, getting ready for the rut, getting ready for rifle season. And um, we, uh, me and my, I got a buddy who's been helping me out. Uh, his name's Chris. Uh, so we, we, you know, we've been doing scouting and everything like that, and uh, we actually came up with this uh, uh, product for uh, uh, it's a 18% protein product. We we fed them from April until uh, I don't know, probably late August, and uh, we watched a 10 pointer, nine pointer, and eight pointer. And um, I didn't want to take the 10 or eight pointer. I seen both of them that day I was hunting, and uh, we sent the nine pointer, and this left side rack was kind of twisted a little bit, and it's kind of disformed, and uh, it's it was about three year old deer so i shot that this year it was my first buck and uh i went ahead and shot it just to, uh so it did, i didn't want it to breed with the other does up there to produce um you know uh, uh bad line of bucks so no you did yeah, that still uh, hunting if i read yeah. your bio, uh, bio correctly is that right yes yes still hunting well, how, do, how does that work? I'm a tree stand guy, and I have never killed a whitetail. I've killed a lot of other critters off the ground, um, but never a whitetail. Uh, how did you do that? Uh, it's, a, it's a lengthy, lengthy process. <laughs> uh, you take a step. <laughs> you take a step. Um, you get down you know, pretty much on kneeling without hitting your knees to the ground. You look around for uh, uh, you know, any kind of tracks or anything like that you can see uh you stand back up and you take another step quietly without stepping on any branches and then you uh you get down you look around you and try to find you know what way would you go if you was a buck you know uh um would you want to be in the open or would you want to be you know in the thickets where uh where uh you know you're hidden from predators and stuff like that we're, we have real bad coats here where i'm at and uh so a lot of our bucks will stay in the thickets i mean i'm pretty sure it's way it is anywhere else i've never hunted anywhere else but kentucky Eastern Kentucky, so um, and that's the way it is here, you know. Uh, predators, they don't want to go in the thicket and get caught up, you know. So they'll wait for the little does or fawns or something like that to come out and do anything. But you know, it's a it's a lengthy lengthy process. So on the day that you harvested your first deer, now if your left arm isn't working real well, how do you how do you shoot your rifle? I shoot a, uh, uh, a semi automatic uh, with the hall point round on it, but uh. It's a Bushmaster AR, and uh, um, I put the magazine in, in my uh, left elbow crease. I'm, I'm, I'm able to uh, raise my arm up and down and bend it, but I'm not able to pick anything up really with it or anything like that. So what I do is put the magazine in my left, uh, right where my forearm and my bicep meet, and uh, I put the magazine there, and I'm able to stabilize it like that. Wow. So how, when, you, when you harvested that buck, how far away was he? Oh, uh, he's about... Uh, I guess I jumped him right around uh, about 35 yards. So up close and personal? Yes. And so what happened when you jumped them? Because the critters I've jumped, they just haul butt. Yeah, he was. Uh, I watched him, and I was just trying to get as close as possible with him. And uh, without scaring him, um, he had a 10-pointer there with him. And what I was trying to do is I was trying to get around um, without shooting the 10-pointer, too. He was laying in front of the 9-pointer um, the was laying in front of the 10-pointer. So I wasn't able to. I had to move around. And by moving around, I jumped him. I didn't want to jump him, but <laughs> that's what that's what happened. But whenever he jumped up, he took off. And you know, uh, I guess my military experience kicked in shooting at your and uh, I took him out for a shot, hard shot. So. The first shot, I was thinking, well, you get an AR, so you get a magazine, and, you know, you can kind of <laughs> run traces until you roll them. <laughs> yeah, well, first shot, he dropped me, ran about 10 yards and dropped. So when 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 you hit him, how far away was he? Um, you know, he was, uh, whenever I hit him, he was about 35 yards away, and then uh, he ran another 10 yards after a shot. And he dropped. Then the fun begins. Now, do you call a buddy to help you uh, get him out and haul him out, or how does that work? Well, I went ahead and got him. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to do that. Where it was my first, my first buck, and uh, uh, we uh, I went ahead and um, started that. And uh, luckily, it was about thirty-five degrees that morning, so I had plenty of time. You know, 
my thoughts are ruining the mint and uh, I started the dragon culture. Yeah, so you hauled him out yourself? Yeah. yeah. Now, how, how big a buck was he? Uh, what did he weigh, you think? Uh, about 220. And you're, and you're how, how, how big are you? Uh, about 175. <laughs> you're one tough hombre. Yeah. <laughs> and we, uh, um, I had uh, I actually kept my sling off my AR and shortened it and then wrapped a sling around his neck, the excess, uh, uh, excess band. And uh, wrapped it yeah. on his neck, tied a knot, and then uh, I was able to uh, um, drag it out successfully like that. Now, do you have a day pack, the AR, and the buck, right? Yep. And how far was the drag? Uh, around, uh, probably around uh, half a mile to three quarters of a mile. Downhill, I hope. Please tell me it was um, downhill. Uh, about a quarter mile was, was uh, flat ground, and then the, at least a quarter mile was flat, and then the rest was uh, downhill. <clears throat> Because uh, like long time, it's not, yeah, it's not just straight down here like our mountains. You know, they're they're kind of big and rough, and you'll have a fifty to hundred foot flat spot, and then he'll go back up. You know, it's like a we call them slate dumps. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I call them benches, but yeah, same benches. thing probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I I haven't hauled out a deer, you know, um, antelope quite a bit, and elk we take it out in parts, and deer we. You know, I've never um, a whitetail with ATVs and and everything we got now. Um, you know, I I'm, it's been a long time since I hauled out a deer. I can remember you know uh, a half a mile drag level, and that just about spent me. And and I got all my work parts working. So hats off to you, man. That's that that's a heck of a deal, and uh, you know, kind of blows me away actually. Um, let's talk about. Uh, how you were able to know where that buck was was bedded, and he was with another buck, and you said they like the thickets because of the predators. So let's talk about how you know that buck was there. Um, we had a, I said a bushnell uh, uh, truck out uh, in let's see early July, I guess it was, and uh, I set that out and. For, I don't know. We put the, we put that feed we we had made up down, uh, you know, thirty feet away from the trail camp, and uh, that deer, we, it was coming from east to west, and uh, uh, it was going west with its bedding spot. So every morning it was going um, west of where we had the camera set up. I watched it walk by every, uh, well, I wouldn't say every morning, but every fourth or fifth morning is walking by around seven thirty at morning, going back to its bedding spot, and uh, on the east side of it, there was also a uh, some. Uh, Cover. Actually, it's a lot of cover on the side of the hill, <laughs> and uh, I, I guess it was feeding off it. And um, I had that camera set up. I actually set about you know 35 yards away from the camera, and uh, it was uh, on the west side of the camera. And I watched that deer that morning walk by me and bed down. And you know, 35 yards away, it's in a it's in two bucks. <laughs> Uh, bed down. Uh, it was kind of an amazing sight for my. It was, uh, it was my second trip out hunting. So, uh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I I just gotta make sure. I just heard. So that morning you were out there and you were there and you let him walk by. It, did I yeah. or the camera told you he was there and then no, you I, figured I, out. Where I, let, I, I I let him walk by because I couldn't shoot him. It wasn't fully. Uh, it wasn't fully. Uh, um, I you know I could barely see my hand in front of my face. <laughs> but were you I, in a I, I suit it. or? Uh, help me understand why. He I, I, let me tell you. Figured dead down wind, dead down wind, seat cover is amazing. Let me tell you that. <laughs> That's the only thing I can tell you. I, you know, I was in rubber boots. I was in, you know, full camouflage. Uh, I washed my stuff in uh, uh, dead down wind, seeing uh, scent detergent, and uh, I washed in that. Spray my body down with dead down wind. Had my face cover on. Uh, I was in orange. Had my orange uh, vest on, had my orange hat on, and uh, uh, I watched them up. So, you know, I, I could see the I could see the sun was coming up just a little bit, but I didn't know what exactly was behind them at that area because it's kind of foggy right now. At that time, I didn't want to take a chance of hitting any other hunters that was walking down wind of me because I there's a couple of the hunters that hunt on that ground, and uh, I, they told me there wasn't going to be hunting that day. But I wanted to make sure exactly. I didn't want to take a shot until. Uh, Understood. So. Understood. So, listeners, here's here's what happened. Trail cameras saying he's going from east to west. Um, there's some um, bait, so he's hanging up long enough to take a, a bite and get get his picture taken. And now about the clover, it was that, is that a natural uh, food plot or is something that you guys planted? No, uh, see, so, uh, we. Uh I bought this. Uh, I bought two and a half acres from uh, uh, one of my buddies, and uh, that's where my house is now. And there's actually four or five other people that hunt that land up there, that spot land from him. It's a 280-acre uh, uh, piece of land that we hunt on. 
and uh, you know it's all mountainside, so uh, it kind of use I could I could use shape 280 acres the way it worked. It's a uh, um, it was like four or five of us. Like I said, two or three of them. I know, I know three of them. They got tree stands there, and one guy just rides around on his four wheeler car. He's disabled, <laughs> and then I'm the, I was the only one still hunting, so I didn't want to take a chance of you know hitting anybody. But you know, it's I guess it's a, just a natural food food plot. Uh, uh, clover. Uh, it's on the southeast side of the hillside, so the sun's going to hit it more direct. So uh, I'm sure that's what reason it, you know caught, uh, started growing there. Man, next year I. I'd help that clover along and, and, and top dress it with, you know, some oats or, or something else and, and see what else you could get growing and, and put up a buffet for those guys. Oh, definitely. We're, we're you know, we're, we're, uh, we're working on getting some, uh, um, some new, uh, um, you know, fertilizer and I'm going to try to get some lime and, uh, uh, throw one up and, uh, uh, I'm going to try to get it grown up, man, good, because it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful natural food plot. Hey, do me a favor, you know, before you start, you know, uh, putting stuff on and lime and everything, go get a soil test. Doesn't cost you a whole heck of a lot of money. Go to your county ag place and, and they'll give you the whole packet and then they'll run it for you and tell you the pH values because I, I talk to a lot of people, Kenny, and, and they go, oh, you know, this is the best seed and yada, yada, yada. And all of a sudden it doesn't grow. And I, you know, and I ask them why. And they'll go, well, um, I did everything. I should do. I said, real simple. Um, did you get a soil test before you started? Well, they said I didn't need it. It's good soil and everything. Well, folks, um, you need to get a soil test. If you're going to put seed in the ground, you pay a buck for the seed or more and get a soil test. Just do yourself a favor because if the pH is off, I don't care if you buy the m- most expensive seed, the best seed, it might not grow if, if you got an imbalance on your pH. So, Lessons learned. Oh, there. Hey, Kenny, how yeah. would people get a hold of you um, if they wanted to reach out to you? Your email, your website. Um, um, I, have e- I have an email. Um, if you want to reach out to me, it's uh, uh, Kenny, K E N N Y, Maynard, M A Y N A R D, underscore zero seven at Yahoo. Well, I appreciate and, uh, it. And then, yeah, you can get all of me there if you know if you're interested in warriors in the woods, or if you have any questions on anything, I'll be happy to you know answer anything you got. Right, and don't forget the warriors in the woods on Facebook. So, uh, folks, at this time, I just want to give a shout out to Mike and Shelly Grandstead with Bite Tell Stalkers. They've come on board, and and we're doing some things together. So, I just wanted to give them a shout out uh, right now. And and uh, folks, um, these fo- uh, these folks on the show, the real people in real places, and sometimes the auto just isn't the best, but. Uh, We're doing the best we can, and uh, I appreciate all your listeners out there. So, Kenny, let's talk about – you mentioned dead downwind – you know, how do you uh, prepare for the hunting season? What what some of your key things? Um, well, like um, last season I bought new hunting clothes. This season I'm gonna buy new hunting clothes. I'm gonna buy new rubber boots, new hunting clothes. If I'm gonna be a hunter, I'm gonna be 110 percent hunter. Uh, I don't I don't give 80 percent effort. I don't give 90 percent effort. I give 110 percent on every single thing I do in life. And uh, um, this year, uh, come June or July. Whenever all the hunting stuff's on sale, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get some new hunting clothes. I buy real tree just because it it looks uh, uh good with what the grounds I, I hunt on. Uh, um, you know, I'm gonna buy probably new muck boots, rubber boots. Um, you know, the scentless kind, and uh, stock up on dead down wind. Uh, only reason I buy that because I, I tried it this year and it worked good for me. So I'm, I'm gonna stick <laughs> yeah, with it. Thirty five yards. Gonna... <laughs> thirty five yards in the dark. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it and stick with it until, uh, until it fails me. And once it fails me, then I'll go with something else. But, uh, I'm hoping it don't fail. So. <laughs> Yeah, one but, uh, thing I, I, I give you, um, you know, supporting big box of stores is good, but uh, eBay, I, I've had no problem uh, getting good uh, good gear, you know, off of eBay. So don't don't minimize that because sometimes you, you get last year's stuff at a deep, deep discount. So, you know, if you don't have okay, an eBay account, on there. Yeah, the eBay account, set one up, and it's real easy, and uh, you'd be surprised uh, what you can get off that for, you know, pennies on a dollar sometimes. And I'm just going to give a, a shout out to Trees and Camo. Uh, you might try um, check out Trees and Camo um, or Treason dot com and Cobb Sanders there, and um, it, you know you might like their camo pattern. And um, it, it's it's type of camo you can get a lot of uh, good quality uh, gear uh, for you know um, what I call um, you know. Uh, 
uh, worker worker prices, and a lot okay. of those guys work, and every penny means something. And so, if you can get your great camel at a great price, uh, check out treason dot uh, com. So let's talk about practicing with your rifle. Um, I get how you can stalk and, and put the magazine in the crook of your your uh, left elbow, and and then track. Obviously, um, you, you can shoot. So how do you practice though? Talk to me about uh, practicing I, I, with your AR. I, you know, I hunt with open shots because of the the hilly terrain, all the trees and stuff during the uh, early, or you know early fall. I guess you'd say. Um, most of the greens hasn't dropped yet. So using a scope, you'd be, you know, it's, uh, your zoom would be too far. Um, open sights is my best bet. So, you know, once I started in, it, it, once I started in around in July, it's going to be good throughout the whole, um, hunting season. But this year or last year, I'm sorry, I went from, uh, uh, you know, I shot probably a few 500 rounds, uh, down the range a couple of times in my backyard and just, uh, just practicing out the best way to, uh, the best way to shoot the, you know, AR pretty much one handed. And, uh, I actually learned some new ways and how to reload and, uh, uh, you know, load a magazine into my, uh, pistol. I carry the Spr- I carry Springfield 40 with me while I'm hunting too. Um, but, uh, I learned how to do that one handed and I, I can actually do it another 1.5 seconds one handed. Let's drop the magazine, put another magazine in and, uh, pull the, ch- uh, pull the slide back and under one and a half seconds. So if anybody's got any questions on how to do that, just give me a call and I'll send you a video. Or, or send yeah, me an email and I'll send Kenny. you a video. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Kenny Maynard underscore zero seven at yahoo dot com. I you need to do a YouTube video on that. You really do. Uh, I've been working on it, and uh, my wife just ended up buying a. She just bought a Canon camera here not too long ago, and I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do some videos of that and uh, 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 some bring up some videos of where uh, where I hunt at. You know, just to, so people can see the ground that what Eastern Kentucky has to deal with. Because you know, I said in, in the first part of this. Uh, uh, you know, windage is a is a big part in, in most of hunting, but we have to rely on thermals more, you know, more or less. And uh, you know, thermals in the morning time it's heating up, the air is pushing up the hill. In the evening time, the air is pushing down the hill. So in the morning time, you want to be above the deer. In the evening time, you want to be below the deer. Um, that's just yes, you do. Uh, and, just uh, uh, your smartphone. Are you talking to me on a smartphone, an Android or or, or iPhone? It's, it's Android. So you can take videos right from that and and you utilize you know the social network and and do you know do some videos right there or go to Facebook Live um, <coughs> and 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 post the shows and and sometimes you know that's a that's an easy way to do it and and people are, are you know they understand you know what the videos are when you do it but it's just getting you know uh, the information out how do you you know um, Drop, insert, and and pull back. Uh, you know, um, in 1.5 seconds, that's pretty fast. I don't know if I could do that with my Ruger's. Uh, I don't think I could do it in 1.5 seconds. I, I know I it's can't. A, <laughs> it's a it's that's a quick process. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a um, I, it's, it took a lot of practice. You know, I went through. Uh, uh, I, I got a hard set mindset. You know, um, where uh, I, I can't quit doing something until I until I feel to myself that okay, I've I've I, you know, I've, I'm to that level, and the next time I try, I gotta, I gotta get to the next level. And uh, yeah, I you just, need to put a YouTube video out of that. It, it might go viral. Then look out! Holy smoke! Hey, let's talk about. We talked about the hunting season, practicing with your rifle. Uh, stand sets don't apply because you're you're you know taking a step, looking, taking a step, working. Uh, this you know the wind's right on your face. Now, one thing about still hunting, I had some guys tell me you don't want the wind dead in your face. You want to be quartering because that's how the deer the deer don't go directly into the wind. They quarter the wind. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it just. I can, where we hunt at, you know, the air is, like, the wind will be hitting you in the face for two minutes, and it'll be hitting behind your head in two minutes. And then it'll be hitting on the side of your face for two minutes. And then it'll be hitting on the right side of your face for two minutes. You know, and that's just the way the wind works. It's just, does a, a big swirling effect. And, uh, um, it's just, you know, one day you might come out and there might not be any wind. And that's the day that you want to be in the tree stand. But, uh, where I'm at, it's, uh, you might get one day, you might get, uh, three hours in a day to where it's, uh, where it's not like that. You know, like I said, our, our, that land we hunt on, it's a, 
you know, from peak to peak, you would make a U with it. Um, and that's kind of, you know, you're, when you got wind coming in, that wind's going to suck into that U and circle all the way around there. And it's just going to keep circling and keep circling and keep circling until it finds its way out again. But uh, uh, it's, it's it's extremely hard to hunt a tree stand if you do good in a tree stand. And uh, the wind must have been good, perfect that day. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I know, uh, I know it, it really don't make no sense because, well, how's the deer going to smell you if you're in the tree stand and, and still hunting, you know? But, uh, um, uh, honestly, I, I can't answer that question, but, uh, I know there's two other people that hunt on that land with in tree stands and they haven't killed the first piece of, they haven't killed the first deer, let alone buck, doe or anything. And that, you know, the, uh, I guess they've been living in the same place I've been living for going on six years now and they haven't killed the first deer up there yet they're up there they just haven't killed them yet my first year out i killed nine point and i seen the team well, that one i could have took it but i went ahead and took the nine point just to you know just to um get rid of i didn't want that buck breeding with uh any any more does that year because uh uh the way the left side handler was you know it was twisted it didn't have a brow time uh, i think i sent you a picture of it right right i got it i got it right here in your bio yeah the if you look at the left side handler it's kind of twisted maybe a three quarter or a, a quarter of an inch and uh yeah, I don't know what happened there. I wish I could have seen it the year prior to see if it was like that. Uh, if it, the other set, uh, its prior horns was like that. But uh, <laughs> um, I wish I could have. I went ahead and took it this year just just in case it was a uh, misbreed. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Now, were you um, when you were in Afghanistan? Were you recon or what was your what was your job there? Uh, uh, Rail clearance. We we uh, cleared uh, uh, road top bombs, IEDs, and. Uh, you know, before anybody was allowed outside of the base, we had to be in front of them. You know, it's not counting recon or uh, special forces or Navy SEALs or anybody like that, but anybody doing, uh, you know, if, if anybody's going outside the base, going on a patrol or anything like that, we had to be, we had to clear the roads in front of them for ID. Got it. Well, you're a pretty stealthy guy, and, you know, I, I've i been up close and personal with with, with a lot of deer, um, and th- that's not an easy thing to do, and so I, I respect the heck out of you uh, doing that. Uh, that's for darn sure. And it's been a, a, just a pure joy to have you on the show. We're at the soft stop now, and you, get, you can give a shout-out to whoever you want, and so you get an open mic for a minute or so. Okay. I like them a lot, man. She's been she been extremely supportive. Uh, you know, I lost my job back in you know um, I lost it in June actually. Um, that's when I had surgery. Um, but April and stuff, I decided to uh, start hunting. But man, she's been extremely supportive in this whole you know in this whole process of trying to find my hobby to uh, uh, keep me settled down. You know, I have a, a chronic PTSD, a TBI, and uh, back on paralysis. And I've been trying to find something to help me get through it, man. And she's and she's uh, been pushing me on to try hunting out, try fishing, you know, try these, try these things. And uh, she's been extremely supportive. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better, for a better support system than her. Well, I appreciate that. And... Kenny Maynard, just thank you so much for sharing some stories that um, you did something that a lot of hunters haven't done. Uh, still hunting, whitetails, 35 yards, one and done. Uh, congrats, man. That's just awesome. So on behalf of hundreds, if not thousands of listeners across North America, thank you for being a guest on Whitetail Rendezvous. Oh, thanks for having me, buddy. Don't forget to tune in for the next episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. We're going to have on Eric Pickarts. He's the managing editor of Wide Open Spaces. If you haven't heard or read about Wide Open Spaces, you really need to. That should be part of your hunting um, digital information uh, platform. Wide Open Spaces brings great stories written by contributors just like you. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.